So these terracotta warrior pits have been excavated and it's up to us to preserve them. Beneath the soil of central China lies something the world has never been allowed to touch, a place sealed, guarded, and protected for over 2,000 years because it holds the final resting place of China's first emperor. For generations, no one was allowed to look beneath the surface until one man was granted your permission to do what no one else could. Albert Lin, a National Geographic explorer, arrived with technology powerful enough to see beneath the earth without breaking its surface. His goal was simple, understand what lies beneath the terracotta army. What he found was not just soldiers frozen in time, but something even more terrifying. So what exactly did Albert Lin uncover beneath the terracotta army? Let's dive in. The Forgotten Kingdom. Stretching across nearly 98 square kilometers, about the size of Manhattan, the mausoleum of Emperor Qin Shi Huang is unlike anything else on Earth. It's more than just a tomb. It's an underground empire, a carefully crafted afterlife kingdom meant to mirror the world the emperor once ruled. The mausoleum stretches far and wide, with hundreds of pits, corridors, and chambers lying beneath the earth. Some pits hold infantry, others chariots, and some even acrobats or musicians meant to entertain the emperor in death. It's a world frozen in time. When farmers digging a simple well stumbled upon the terracotta army in 1974, the world was stunned. More than 8,000 life-sized warriors stood in perfect formation. Each figure was unique. Some looked stern, others tired, and a few seemed like they might take a breath at any moment. Even though visitors can see the terracotta army, most of the mausoleum remains sealed and off limits. High fences, military guards, protect areas that few researchers and no tourists can enter. Some zones are restricted military areas, preserved not just for history, but for reasons the government won't fully explain. Ancient records say Qin Shi Huang filled his tomb with rivers of mercury and deadly traps for intruders. They even claim thousands of workers were buried alive to keep the emperor's secrets safe. For centuries, people thought these were just stories. But the more archaeologists explored, the more these myths started to feel like warnings. Even today, large parts of the tomb remain untouched, either too dangerous, too fragile, or strictly off-limits. Dark pits disappear into the earth. When you stand above the mausoleum, you can feel a strange weight, as if this beauty were built on suffering. Something was buried there, something that should not exist. This is the Forbidden Underground Kingdom, a realm built not for the living, but for the eternal rule of Qin Shi Huang. And somewhere in this enormous maze of stone, clay, and shadows, Albert Lin was about to uncover something that would shake the whole world. Albert Lin's unprecedented access. Albert Lin arrived at the Terracotta Army site feeling both awe and disbelief. He knew this place carried a long history. Now, Lin was not a traditional archaeologist. He chased the past like a detective, using technology designed for war zones. His work was well known and respected around the world. Even so, getting access to restricted parts of the Terracotta Army was nearly impossible. For decades, China had kept the undiscovered areas under strict military control. Drones were tightly limited. Scans needed special approval. Even trained researchers often worked in the dark, allowed to see only what officials approve. Yet somehow, Lin received access that no foreign investigator had ever been given. From the moment he arrived, the tension was clear. Uniformed officers watched his equipment closely. Every drone flight was monitored. Every scan required permission. As his team set up their instruments, the silence inside the pits felt heavy. Lin later said standing in the restricted core of the site felt like entering sacred space. Very few archaeologists had ever walked in some of these areas. 
Even fewer were allowed to study them closely. Yet Lin moved through chambers that were untouched for thousands of years. He described the feeling as unreal. It felt like history was alive and breathing around him. Clay warriors stood tall in every direction. Some looked stern, others looked calm. It felt like real soldiers frozen in time. Every pit revealed new details. Chariot units were arranged with wheel spokes still visible after centuries. Stables held terracotta horses positioned as if they were waiting for orders. Bronze weapons remained sharp and untouched. Each chamber felt like a sealed moment, a memory locked in clay and stone. But Lin was not there to admire the artistry. He was there to uncover what human eyes had never seen. He carefully deployed his drones, each equipped with advanced scanning technology. On the ground, his team positioned radar systems along the floor, mapping deep layers that were hidden for thousands of years. As Lin studied the silent rows of warriors, an uneasy feeling settled in. The beauty surrounding him seemed to conceal something deeper, something darker beneath the surface. It felt as if something was waiting to be uncovered, something the Emperor never intended anyone to discover. And soon, through a bold use of technology, Lin would finally see it. The Breakthrough For decades, no one was allowed to fly anything over the mausoleum, not even archaeologists. The area was considered too sacred and too secret. But Albert Lin, armed with rare permission and supported by cutting-edge imaging technology, became the first to send a drone into the sky above it. From above, the site revealed more than endless rows of warriors. The true scale of the underground world began to emerge. Patterns appeared, grids, alignments, and geometric shapes that could never be understood from ground level. Lin also used LIDAR, a laser-based mapping system capable of cutting through vegetation, soil, and surface layers. Beneath the visible pits lay a vast network of anomalies, empty voids, buried walls, collapsed chambers, and shapes resembling mass burial zones. Some areas showed signs of extreme heat. Then came the most unsettling discoveries. Deep below the infantry pits, the scans revealed clusters of irregular depressions. They were too chaotic to be buildings, yet too organized to be natural formations. Their signatures matched what archaeologists recognize as mass graves. The ground appeared damaged, scarred by violent events. There were fractures in the soil, signs of sudden force, and scattered bone-like signatures. Something terrible had taken place beneath the terracotta army. Lin stared at the data without speaking. He understood exactly what it meant. What lay beneath the terracotta army was not just an emperor's afterlife kingdom. It was a graveyard. A graveyard not of honored warriors, but of victims. The terrifying discovery. The truth revealed by the scans was far darker than anyone had imagined. Beneath the flawless rows of clay warriors, beneath the beauty and the grandeur, lay the silent remains of the people who built it all. As Lin's team layered deeper scan data, they realized this was not a single burial site. The same pattern appeared repeatedly beneath multiple warrior formations. Dozens of underground voids were filled with human remains. For centuries, historians had suspected that Qin Shi Huang ordered workers buried alive to protect the secrets of his tomb. The ancient historian Sima Qian wrote that those who helped build the mausoleum were never allowed to leave. But the scans revealed something far more brutal. Pit after pit showed skeletons with crushed skulls. In several chambers, radar data pointed to violent structural collapses. Tools lay scattered beside the bodies. These workers were not honored. They were just silenced. Bodies were dumped into chambers covered with soil and then sealed forever as the terracotta army was built directly above them. And then came the tunnels. The scans detected faint echoes, signatures suggesting air pockets deeper than any mapped chamber. 
Lin believed these were collapsed or undiscovered tunnels. Some stretched far beneath the visible pits. No historical records ever mentioned tunnels this deep. What disturbed Lin the most were the footprints. Using density imaging, faint impressions emerged in one underground chamber. Traces of workers running, stumbling, or being dragged. The soil had preserved their final movements, like a photograph frozen in time. Even Lin, who had witnessed mass graves and war zones, stopped. The deeper we looked, he said quietly, the worse the story became. This was no peaceful resting place. It was a graveyard built through fear, sealed with murder, and guarded by clay soldiers whose silent faces concealed the truth. And one body, one skeleton buried deeper than all the others, carried a story even more chilling. The prince, who died in the dark, near the center of the scanned model, the team noticed something that didn't fit. Beneath the orderly layout of chambers and tunnels was a single pit, older than the structures around it, cut deeper into the earth as if it had been deliberately hidden by everything that came later. Inside it lay one skeleton. It had not been thrown in. The bones were arranged carefully, almost deliberately. The remains belonged to a young man in his early 20s. But what stopped the room cold was the object lodged deep inside his skull, a bronze arrowhead bedded in his skull. This was not an accident. This was execution. And suddenly, the question was no longer how he died, but who he was. Ancient Qin records mention the sons of Qin Shi Huang. They were born into power, but lived under constant suspicion. Several of them later disappeared from history with no explanation. For centuries, historians debated what happened to them. There was never proof, only silence. As archaeologists examined the chamber, details began to align in unsettling ways. The burial was careful, not careless. The materials surrounding him were expensive, not common. And the chamber itself lay far below the worker tunnels, in a place no laborer would ever reach by accident. This was no ordinary victim. This may have been one of the emperor's own sons, not killed by enemies, but killed by command. As Lin studied the pit's structure more closely, he realized it wasn't shaped like a tomb. The space felt less like a burial chamber and more like a prison. The positioning suggested he may have been confined there before his death, sealed away from the world, erased from memory while still alive. And yet, despite every effort to silence him, his story survived. As Lin stepped back and watched the archaeologists examine the remains, he realized this wasn't just a tomb. It was evidence of betrayal. And as grim as this discovery was, it was only the beginning. The Ancient Scrolls Deep inside sealed chambers near the Emperor's tomb, Archaeologists uncovered something no one expected to survive at all. Bundles of bamboo scrolls. To protect the texts, experts worked in a controlled environment, and what emerged felt less like a record and more like a confession. These scrolls, similar to others found in nearby excavation zones, contained some of the most chilling accounts of Qin Shi Huang's reign. Line by line, they described a system ruled not just by law, but by fear. One scroll recorded the execution of scholars, more than 460 men buried alive. Others documented mass book burnings, ordered to erase philosophies and knowledge that threatened absolute control. Several texts went even further. They contained written confessions signed by artisans, engineers, and officials. The charges were vague, but terrifying. Treasonous thoughts, plotting rebellion, or failing to meet construction quotas. Together, the scrolls revealed a workforce living under constant surveillance, where mistakes were fatal. As historians read the translations, a heavy realization set in. Qin Shi Huang, long celebrated as the unifier of China and the creator of monumental wonders like the Great Wall, and the Terracotta Army 
was now visible in unfiltered form, a ruler driven by paranoia, fear, and an overwhelming need for control. Lin stood quietly as the words were read aloud. And in that moment, the Terracotta army seemed to change. They were no longer just masterpieces of art and symbols of loyalty. They became something darker, an eternal force of domination, standing guard over a foundation built on suffering, silence, and death. This was more than an archaeological discovery. It exposed the danger of unchecked authority. And yet, even after all these revelations, the greatest mystery remains sealed. Beyond an untouched door lies the Emperor's central tomb, a place ancient texts describe as containing rivers of flowing mercury and treasures beyond imagination. The sealed tomb. At the very heart of the entire complex lies the most forbidden place in China, the sealed central tomb of Qin Shi Huang. No one has opened it. No one has entered it. No one truly knows what waits inside. Mercury levels were not just elevated. They were hundreds of times higher than what occurs naturally. Ancient texts had long claimed that the emperor ordered rivers and seas of mercury to flow around a miniature palace inside his tomb, creating a symbolic empire beneath the earth. For centuries, those accounts were dismissed. Now, they look uncomfortably real. If the tomb were opened, those gases could escape suddenly, turning a historic excavation into a deadly event. If the chamber were breached, that pressure could discharge violently with unpredictable consequences. Then there is the question of preservation. In the 1980s, archaeologists opened a smaller warrior pit and watched in shock as vibrant paint on the figures began to flake away within seconds. After being sealed for more than two millennia, exposure to air destroyed colors that had survived untouched since the emperor's reign. If Qin Shi Huang's tomb contains wooden halls, silk banners, murals, or delicate artifacts, opening it without perfect control could erase them instantly, wiping out history the moment it is revealed. Lin's scans of the central chamber only deepened the mystery. But one thing is unmistakable. Qin Shi Huang never intended this tomb to be opened, and so far, the world has obeyed his wish, not out of reverence for an ancient emperor, but out of fear. Now there's one question that remains. Will the tomb of Emperor Qin Shi Huang ever be opened? Most experts believe the answer is no, at least not anytime soon. The reasons are as scientific as they are philosophical. First, China's official position has remained firm, preservation over discovery. Opening it prematurely could destroy irreplaceable relics and unleash unknown dangers. Second, even with modern advancements, archaeologists still don't have tools capable of preserving everything inside the moment the seal is broken. Third, there is a moral debate. Should anyone violate the tomb of a ruler who clearly intended it to remain sealed forever? These questions leave archaeologists divided. Some believe that future technology will one day make it possible to explore the tomb safely, using advanced imaging or tiny drones, without ever breaking its seal. Others feel the mystery itself deserves protection and that some secrets were never meant to be uncovered. The Terracotta Army has always been a wonder. But thanks to Albert Lin's groundbreaking exploration, we now know it guards a truth far darker and more complex than we ever imagined. Beneath its beauty lies a kingdom built on silence and suffering and secrets that have survived for over 2,000 years. So, what do you think? What mysteries still lie sealed behind the emperor's untouched chamber? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. If you liked this video, ensure you give it a thumbs up. Also, consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already, because we will be uploading more crazy stories like this one in the coming weeks. Until then, see ya.